We Brits are a nation of compulsive collectors. Across the country, there are storage units crammed with clutter, <laughs> bulging barns, and jam-packed garages. Wow, you've got a lot of stuff, Dad. Home to dreams. I haven't seen that for so many years. Memories. So who did this belong to, then? And excess baggage. And we're drowning in it. You've got some stuff in here, haven't you? But among the debris and disorder... Heavens Fair above. Enough. I've never seen so many rings. My mission is to uncover the stories... They were your grandmothers. Yeah. Find the hidden gems... There's a thousand pounds there. <laughs> and turn the mess into money. 180, 190, 200. This is artist Tracy Marcel. Her storage has cost nearly £4,000 over the past three years. Daughter Rowan thinks it's all gone too far. So, how did she get into this hoarding hole? I got the workshop originally to somewhere to do my art degree, but what's happened in the meantime is I've kind of filled it with the collections of things that I'm just interested in. It's turned into storage, really. There's no way you could work in there. It's cost me thousands. And then there's using my friend's workshop space and bunging her a few quid. Tracy lives near the famous spa town of Harrogate. Despite filling her precious art studio to the brim, Tracy's in denial about her storage habit. I wouldn't say I'm a hoarder, no. Actually, it bothers me that I've got all that stuff. I, I, I like the history of things, but I also like the potential of what they're going to become. As an artist, Tracy's inspiration is the things everyday folk leave behind. Daughter Rowan loves her mum's art, but is getting frustrated with the mess. My mum's a salvager. She likes to get something for free. She decides to go and look in skips. She'll find stuff and she'll think, oh, I could do something with that. What greatness you can get from something that's actually been discarded by everybody else and they're finished with, but you can save it and turn it into something great. I'd say I'm a womble, really. But all that salvage has got to go somewhere, and even Tracy's house is full of it. I've got boxes full of metal wares, animal bones, every kind of paint you can imagine, every kind of tool you can imagine, human detritus, some really hideous ceramic dolls. You know, there's porcelain dolls to scare your friends with. There's plenty of them seem to turn up. As well as the raw materials for her work, Tracy's storage problem was made worse by the recent death of her sister, Michelle, who she was very close to. I lost my sister and I inherited all her belongings. So I actually found it easier to keep my sister's things here with me and just put a lot of mine into storage. And now some of hers has gone in. Her stuff isn't so much the antique stuff, it's just very personal. I think the, on the only difficulty will come when we're going to Auntie Michelle's things. She can get quite emotional when we're moving stuff to be careful of things, and it's... I think that's the only time when we might possibly have a bit of a wobble. Tracy's now desperate to clear out the clutter from her art studio and get back to work. Now I can feel that creativity coming back and I just want the space, I just want that stuff out and I can start throwing things around again and seeing what happens. Can I persuade this creative collector to see the art in clearing out? Time to come face to face with her crafty clutter. So, do you think, is this going to be an easy job? Oh, no, <laughs> you obviously haven't seen it yet, but <laughs> it's intense. Well, better not put it off any longer. Let's have a look inside. OK. <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> Should just go home again? <laughs> oh, wow. So, really, this is just a place that you come to and put more things into, is that right? Pretty much, yeah, over, over years. I think we need to start getting stuff out, okay. actually. Uh, so what's this, for instance? This looks like a bedside table. It is a bedside table. The lady's actually bought this from me and she was supposed to come and get it, but she hasn't. OK, so this already belongs to someone else. So that's I'll a good yeah. start. I'll do the train. Thank you. Yeah, this one's a bit embarrassing, really. I um, was given this about five years ago to paint for a lady. Yes. And because it was one of those small jobs, I just kept putting it off. I thought, I can do that quickly. And then it yeah. just never got done. How much. long would that take you? Oh, I don't know. No An, time uh, Two hours, OK? Right, let's, let's get this Form out. Chain. Ruin. Thank you. That would be so quick. Anyway. Oh. 
so far I can't see any treasures. No, you might struggle. Tracy, what sort of an artist are you? Um, well, I do mainly big installations, but made from the objects people leave behind. If that's your source of material, stuff that people are finished with, i.e. with the contents of this room, yeah. how are you going to be able to let go of it if you see it all as material? Some things will jump out and some things will just become completely forgotten about. Mm. And most of it is now forgotten about and so can go, really. Excellent! Tracy's best bet is to get everything out so she can see exactly what she's got. We have a ton of stuff to shift here. We need serious help. I'm going to get some guys on the job, OK? OK. Our next calamitous collector is Diana Johnson. For the past two years, she's been filling her home till it's ready to burst. Her friend Michelle thinks it's all got to stop. So what's the story behind this hoard? Hang on, guys. This isn't hoarding. Hoarding is keeping things entirely useless for a rainy day. I call it research. Diana lives in Shrewsbury, birthplace of famous scientist Charles Darwin, which is just the sort of local history that appeals to keen researcher and collector Diana. I'm in a 1960s home collecting post-war glass, kitchenalia, things that are more suited to these surroundings. Diana has recently downsized from a much larger house. Combine that with taking on her late mother's belongings and the result? Clutter and chaos. It's been move something to one side to enable you to do something and work in progress. Diana's old friend Michelle has had long enough to come to terms with Diana's hoarding ways. I've known Diana for 17 years. I know that she's got a lot of stuff squirrelled away in all sorts of places. Trying to pin her down has been really difficult. Though Diana has a not very well hidden agenda for enlisting Michelle's support. I selected Michelle Gasper because I saw her do a supreme job over the years of decluttering her husband. What's more, I've got this piece of furniture that I purchased recently and she's the proud possessor of a car that's longer than mine that can take a four-foot sideboard. I think what makes Diana tick is discovering. She is an avid researcher. An, an academic, really. That's her passion. Ready? Yep. With Diana still acquiring new stuff, will she be prepared to listen to Michelle's words of wisdom? I think she's going to snap at me. I think she's going to be irritated by me, and and she won't she won't want to be pushed at that point. And I will push at that point. So why does this convinced collector feel the need to clear out? I want the space that this house can offer me. I'm eager to completely strip my bedroom and to demolish the wardrobe in order to produce something more spacious. That's proving a problem. Can this dedicated collector be persuaded to find a new home for her hoard and reclaim her house from clutter? I've sent collectibles expert Tracy Martin along to Shrewsbury to help Diana sift the gold from the glitter. This is the room I am just desperate to detail. And this is the room I'm desperate to see what's behind that door. Shall we go? Absolutely. Let's do it. So here you are. Wow. At first glance, it's more storeroom than bedroom. You've got some stuff in here, haven't you? Just a bit. So is this a room you use? Oh, yes, I sleep in here. How do you get into bed? I climb. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> I have a little route and you get used to it. When you go out buying, do you not think, where am I going to put it? How am I going to enjoy it to no. its potential? No! 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 Because <laughs> I often buy something because I want to research it. And sometimes I grow out of things. My interests change. So, Michelle, how are your feelings on Diana's, I suppose, almost obsession? Well, I find it really entertaining to listen to Diana's acquisitions. <laughs> That's one part of me. The other part of me is going, oh, where's this going to go? Where's the place that's going to go? Let's have a little rummage and see what we can find. Fabrics, textiles, tell me about these. Where have these come from? This comes from Iran. It's a tablecloth. And do you use this? Yes. 
Shall we take this and pop this outside so that we can go through this later? I think we should. OK, so we'll pop that. My goodness, I can see a table. <laughs> I think Diana's best bet is to get everything out so she can see her hoard properly. Coming up, a battle of the baggage for Tracy. What about this thing here? I'll keep that at the workshop. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> and it's time to get tough with Diana's period paraphernalia. Bin. Oh, no, no, no. She's so stubborn. I think it should go. We've been helping two hapless hoarders. Earlier, we met creative collector Tracy, who's amassed a studio full of arty artefacts. Really? This is just a place that you come to and put more things into, is that right? Pretty much, yeah. And history buff Diana, who's got a lifetime's worth of cultural curios. Later, I'll be asking our antiques experts to help our hoarders sort through their unwanted items and see if there's anything of value to take to auction. To help them come to terms with their collections, they need to get everything out of their units so they can see exactly what they've got. I found them the space and brought in some extra muscle to help. I want them to split their possessions into categories. Keep it for those really sentimental pieces, skip it for anything old, broken or just plain awful, or sell it for the items they think could be of value. I've also added a charity area where they can put anything that's too good to chuck. With everything out in the open, it's a chance to see the extent of their hoards. Tracy has an intriguing hoard, half junk, half art. The job will be working out which is which. While Diana looks like she might have some items with an intriguing history of their own. Time for Tracy and Rowan to get down to work. Oh my goodness. <laughs> This is going to take ages. God, it really is. Right, get my head on. I am very surprised. No, I like it. I mean, it's quite exciting. I knew you had a bit of Look stuff, at this for a scary even. one. Ooh. That's really nice. <laughs> I've just seen the workshop looking brilliantly empty, and it's just. I feel great it's about it. You yeah, it's stage. made me feel really enthusiastic to do something. Oh, it's amazing. I love it, me. Bit of space so you can get creative. Yeah. Looks like Tracy has been re inspired, but if she doesn't get a move on, it could all be going back in. Meanwhile, home hoarder Diana is confronted by a garden of delights. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. How did I squeeze all that in? Where did you squeeze all that in? Under the bed, you saw oh, it. Oh, my God. It didn't yeah. quite look this much when we were up there taking it out. We don't have to roll up our sleeves, girl. So this. That tea trolley goes together with these sections here to make a very modernist 1960s piece. It okay. takes up so little space and it's so groovy and modern, I really want to keep it. Well, that's not a great start, is it, Diana? And even Tracy's having the curse of the keeps. I was going to do some decoupage on that, so I'm going to have um, to keep it, I'm afraid. What do you want to do? Do you want to just thin this? No, I don't want to thin the doll's house stuff. You wanted me to mend that stuff, didn't you? Oh, What's it going to be? Well, I'm going to have to separate it, cos some of it is worth selling, so... <laughs> it's, it's worse than I am. I'm not worse than you are. You could never lay that You're me. only 24. Give it another 18 years. You'll be surfing on newspapers. Looks like hoarding could run in the family. And I don't think Tracy has a clue where some of these items come from. I'm going to have to keep these, I'm afraid. Oh, Mum! Seriously? Yeah, you... they're going in the art box now. No! They? Well, I have no idea where these things turned up from. They just come in my possession and they, this, these will never leave. These have got to go in the art box, definitely. What are you going to do with them? Well, I don't know. That's the beauty of the art box, <laughs> isn't it? Hmm, I think it's time I step back in. Girls, girls, girls. <laughs> this is quite a lot, isn't it? Yes. Oh, yes. You... I'm not is quite it... sure where to start. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know That's what it. you want to keep for yourself? The things, personally, are very few. Like, for instance, there's a quilt that I sewed there when I was studying art. I, I'll be keeping that. And, Rowan, is there anything here that you want to keep for yourself? A lot so... of this stuff is just going to be shipped out, I think. OK, so, actually, it's just a case of working right through it, isn't it? Yeah. Brilliant. 
Do you want an electric pepper grinder? Look at the size of it. Oh, my neck, who has that much pepper? Charity. 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 Tracy's even been hoarding storage in which to store her hoard. What about this thing here? Oh, actually, it's quite handy for storage and seating. I'll keep that at the workshop. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Thin into the wedge here. Da, da, da. I'm in trouble. Um, the thing is, if you put stuff inside it, then you won't see what's inside it, and you're going to put stuff on top of it, and then that's going to be the start of, you know, yeah. unless you really love it and no. you know it will be really useful. OK. It. All right, it can go then. Yeah. In among the curios and clutter, there are some mementos of Tracy's late sister, Michelle. When we were children, we were always bought the same thing. You'd get two of something. Uh -huh. And this was the music box that we both had one of. But mine instantly was drawn all over, vandalised, <laughs> gone in an instant. Kind Live of in the moment. Yeah, that's me. So they belong to Michelle. Uh, what's this, yeah. the baby's dummy? That's her daughter's dummy. But that's why I want things clearing out, because these things do mean something to me. I'd actually yes. like to look at them now and again. Yes. And yeah. that's never going to happen while they're all... In storage. Tracy has unearthed something she thinks might be of value. So, let's see what... Oh, wow! I love the linens. These were given to me by a friend a long time ago. I did have somebody look at this and he said he'd never seen another one like it because of the, the battleships. Oh, this battleship? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, the quality yeah. is amazing and it's in really good condition, isn't it? Absolutely lovely. Would you ever consider selling this sort of thing? Um, only for the right amount of money. I really love it. I believe it's valuable. Mm -hmm. This is a really intriguing artefact. So I've sent Tracy off to see Anne Richmond and Margaret Wigglesworth, lace experts and stalwarts of the local lace makers guild. But is there money in Tracy's lace or is it just old bobbins? We'll start off with this one, which is a piece of shadow work embroidery. It's handmade. Mm -hmm. Difficult to know how long it is, but it's beautifully executed. And really, you don't see it very often. This is a piece of commercial material made for the tourist industry in the Far East, probably about 50 years ago, something like right. that. The next piece is probably the most interesting. It's a piece of crochet lace stitched onto what we think is a commercial mat. But because it's got the ship designs on it, we think it's probably got a connection with the White Star Line. It's got the Union flag yeah. and the Irish flag. OK, yeah. you've got your clues in there. Yes. Yeah. Antique lace is popular among tapestry and textile collectors, and samples can date back as far as the 16th century. There are a couple of distinguishing characteristics that can help you identify it. Antique lace will be made by a fine metal crochet hook. Typically, the lace's motifs will be made separately, then joined together by mesh using small hoops called picots. Also, look for motifs associated with the laces reported or potential country of origin, such as flags or national flowers, which have been incorporated into the design. But it is beautifully done. It's um, lovely. It is lovely. There's no great commercial value with any of them. And if you wanted to sell them on, it would be difficult. So I suggest you look after them and use them. OK. It was really interesting to meet the ladies from the Guild and hear about the lace, a bit of some of the history. As for the value, they've told me there's not a great monetary value, that they're quite, there's no real market for them, and just to enjoy them, which is slightly disappointing because I've got great respect for the amount of work that's put into these pieces, and in, in my world, they'd be really valuable. Looks like the lace will be going home with Trace. And Diana's got her own piece of treasured textile. That is my travelling skirt for Islamic countries, keep. Keep. We'll put that on the keep. Diana. Hello. Birdcage. <laughs> it's what you call a dust attractor. So what do you want to do with this? I'd love to sell it. Sell it. This is my father's typewriter. And there is he typing on that machine in 1944. Okay. So I'm going to put... An emotional hold on getting rid of this, it's got to stay. OK, I've, I've got no problem with you and keeping that. And it would that. fit under the bed. Right, onto an easy bed. Before Diana puts everything back under the bed, I think it's time for Tracy to get stuck in. 
Oh, it's got some of the original bottles still there. Missing a few. It is. I used to use it for my makeup and have eyeliners vertically in it and oh, mascaras did you? and things. So if it's not a family piece, is this something you bought at auction? No, my mother used to know a retired chemist. He was very careful to wash out the bottles so that you weren't ingesting opium when you bought oh, it. Oh, God, yeah, could you imagine? I'm pretty sure I know what's in here. Oh, yeah? Ta-da! An oboe. So is it yours? It is. I didn't know this about you, Diana. This she came was... to me when I was about 13 and have been learning the oboe for a year or so. But I think it would have a future with somebody else who would play it. So we can put this into the cell pile quite yes. happily. What do you want to do? Let me have a look at this. Bin. Oh, no, no, no. Bin. No, I'm interested in British tourism, and that is not Blackpool Tower as it is today. Michelle, have you always had this problem? Was she not? Was she not? She's so stubborn. I think it should go. Two against one. Tried to help you clear your clutter, young lady. Time is running out for our collectors. It's heads down if we want to decide what is worth going to auction. And Tracy and Rowan need to discover the art in decluttering. Oh. But things like this, they're broken, and all they'll be good for is artwork. What I like about the workshop being empty is I'll be able to just put objects on the side and actually and consider them. them. You'll be able to have ideas <laughs> about what the you one, want yeah? to do. Yeah. At last, and the sail pile is building fast. That handbag is so garish that I think that has to go. Michelle is doing her part with the growing skip pile. Great. But there's one item Diane has come across that speaks volumes. I've just found something very shabby. OK. But very close to my heart. It's a furnishing catalogue. Oh, wow. Look at the furniture. You can even furnish a house for £100 or something. So look there, 27 guineas to furnish a house. So how did you acquire this, Diana? I didn't acquire it. My mother picked it out of a skip. Is it quite sentimental to you? The power of the research it gives me is irresistible. It's a tatty old catalogue, no more and no less, but it doesn't take much space, and it's, I think there's a space in my life for it. So that goes into the keep pile. Yes, please. There you go. So it looks like Diana's catalogue is staying in her collection. Time's up. And both pairs have managed to sort their items into keep, skip and sell piles. It's been a struggle, but Tracy's managed to pull together quite a haul for sale. A fair amount in Diana's keep pile. But skip, charity and sell aren't quite so healthy. More importantly, are there any hidden treasures buried among them? Coming up, Tracy's got big plans for her stash. We come on to all this, this brass. Well, this is my idea of a pension. As her hoard goes under the hammer. <laughs> Excellent. Welcome back to Storage Hoarders, where I'm getting to grips with the bulging belongings of today's stockpilers in distress. Earlier, we met artist Tracy, who's no longer able to work because her studio is rammed full of clutter. I have no idea where these things turned up from. They've just come in my possession and they, this, these will never leave. And history fan Diana, who has filled her home with the effects of a lifetime's collecting. Bin. Oh, no, no, no. She's so stubborn. I think it should go. Now it's time to see if there's anything of value hiding away in their hoards. I've asked antiques expert Paul Hayes to look through Tracy's items. So what's he found in this collection of clutter? He had some great furniture. Now, tell me first of all, the, the, the set of chairs, these are beautiful, aren't they? These were given to me by a good friend. What yeah. you have got are a set of six Edwardian dining chairs, beautiful quality, with a Gothic revival splat. Okay. <laughs> 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 uh, this lovely splat back, it was typical around about the year 1900. Okay. And these are solid mahogany, great feet, and a great to have a set of six. So you're looking a couple of hundred pounds there. If yeah. I say sort of 150, 200 pounds, that's a nice set. Oh, fantastic. Does that sound yeah. all right to you? That sounds good to me. And sticking with the, the Edwardian theme, we have a lovely octagonal plant table here. Uh, this one's uh, in good condition, but there is a very distinctive triangle shape on the top of an iron. Who, yes. who, who was that? Can you see that? <gasps> I couldn't tell you who did that. <laughs> it adds to the patina. Uh, well, I've put together little sets of, of Victoriana, really, I suppose you'd call these. You, you have the, the tureen complete with lid and ladle. The ladle's all important. They always get broken yeah. and, uh, and misplaced. It's called Flow Blue. 
because the blue runs around. Can you see that? Nice. It has a lovely sort of soft edge yeah. to it. All right, it's uh, lovely. It's okay. uh, but then also with it, we have a cider pattern flagon. People love to see these to keep your cider in the Victorian times. Right. Right. All right. And then we come on to all this, this brass. Now, was this a fashion? Was, was this something that you went through at the time or something? It, well, this is my idea of a pension. <laughs> <laughs> because everybody's melting down ornamental brass at the moment because the scrap value is so good. Yeah. But maybe I'll be ready to get rid of it now. Mm. <laughs> You've got some horse brass as well. Did you used to keep horses? Or you... No, not at all. They're just things I've come across gradually. Oh, right. okay. So you'd be good 30 to 50 pounds on that lot as okay, well. Okay, lovely. With Rowan's help, Tracy's done a great job of sorting through her hoard, and Paul's found some intriguing artefacts to take to auction. There's a set of six Edwardian chairs, which she's valued at 150 to 200 pounds. The Edwardian mahogany table, which she has given an estimate of 40 to 60 pounds. The terrine and the cider flagon, valued at 30 to 50 pounds and the collection of brassware, which is also estimated at 30 to 50 pounds. A group of prints and antique documents also caught Paul's eye, which is estimated at 20 to 30 pounds. But there's an impressive collection of items that has really grabbed him. Who collected all this? This was my sister's collection. It's called Limoges, and it's, it's actually made in France. It's sort of ornamental things, so they're not really meant for no. proper use. Yeah, they're called a cabinet set. This collection looks really interesting, so I've sent them off to see Gary Don and Leeds, whose firm have been dealing in everything from antique furniture to collectible bric-a-brac for over 80 years. So, what does he think? How do you do, Tracy? Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. And this is Tracy's Limoges collection, and it's a nice collection. Now, wow. is this the sort of thing that you handle quite a lot, then? Yes, yeah. Right. Um, we, we see quite a lot of this. These here... Not terribly old, you know, probably 60s, yeah. you know, maybe a bit okay. later than that. It's the sort of thing that people have gone over to France uh, would have bought these as souvenirs and everything. This is a good example, right? This is obviously had cognac in, and it's the Grand Master's collection there. Lovely, lovely Renoir picture. Okay. The first thing I always do with this is I give it a rattle to see if it's full. Unfortunately, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> How many full ones do you see, Kelly? Um, well, you don't see that many full ones, right? Um, you've got another one here. Let's check this one out. That's Napoleon there. As that you can lovely. see, that's lovely, isn't it? Mm. With his with his hat on and oh yeah, that's uh, that's full. So people would have been out in, in France, sort of collecting these things yes. in the nineteen sixties, that sort of that's thing. That's right. Yeah. So, so how did your sister yeah. come across these then? If you don't mind me Do you know? I have no idea where it started. No. She just particularly liked them and just started picking things up from all over. Limoges in central France has been home to the creation of fine hand painted porcelain since the eighteenth century. The porcelain is made in a number of factories in the area and value will depend on age, quality and market. Items made for the tourist market have the least value. Real period items can cost thousands. So is Tracy's collection prized porcelain or just cheap china? But I think overall value, I think in terms of a lovely weekend, maybe a few days in Blackpool, okay. as, opposed to, <laughs> as opposed to a holiday in the Bahamas. And the market is depressed for this sort of thing in this country. So, although I don't normally say this, <laughs> right, I, I would try the, you know, try the internet, but, yes. you know, um, try and appeal more towards the American side or even the Australian side, because mm. that's a massive up and coming market at the moment really? in Australia, yeah. Mm. Other than that, you can try it, if it doesn't sell, bring it to me, we'll split it into lots. That would be on its own, of course. Okay. We'd put the plates together as a lot, and then we'd put the rest of these together and make a lot up. But very nice of you to bring this, and nice yeah, to meet you. thank you. Good to meet you, too. Thank you, and I'm sorry I haven't made you a millionaire. That's all right, next time. <laughs> next time, I promise. Okay. So with no sale, does Tracy have a plan B? They're very unfashionable at the moment, and I think maybe in the future they'll be worth more um, you know, my sister spent a long time collecting them and I'd, I wouldn't let them go lightly, really, so I think I'll hang on to them. That's one collection at least that's not going anywhere. But next stop is the auction in West London to see how the rest of our items perform under the hammer. How much are you hoping to make today at auction? I was hoping to make, and what I think I'll make. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping to make a thousand pounds. Okay. I think I'll make a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have dreams. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Anything in there that you're not sure about selling anymore? No, I'm perfectly happy for it all to go. Really. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And Rowan, is there anything in there that you think your mum shouldn't be selling, or 
Not particularly. I think she needs to just get all the things out uh -huh. of there. So, auction's about to begin. All the best and we'll have a chat afterwards. That's a positive outlook, so let's see what auctioneer Matthew Caddick thinks about Tracy's lots. In amongst the items, um, uh, you've got the furniture, albeit some of it antique. They should sell, though. I mean, they're moderately estimated. You've also got some brass. Uh, now, these mixed lots of brass tend to get interest from buyers. You know, there's a few things in there that I'm sure people will be interested in. Of course, you've always got the scrap weight, so there's a double-edged sword of potential for that, for that lot. First up is Tracy's collection of brassware, which has been valued at around 30 to 50 pounds. I don't want this to sell. You don't want this to sell. You don't want this to sell. Oh God, what's the reserve you got in it? 20? 20 pounds start me, 20 pounds I'm bidding to, I'll take. Oh dear, it will sell now. 25. We stopped there at 22 pounds. You will not hold that hand. She's not bidding. I'm going to sell it. 22, 1, 2, 3, 5. You all right with that? Oh, good, oh, good for you. £22, we're off. Next to those Edwardian splat-back chairs, valued by Paul at £150 to £200. £100 for them. £80 for them, we'll record the bid. No bids of £80, shall I pass this lot then? No one likes these at £80. Well below reserve at £80, no interest. Not sold. Oh dear, oh Tracy. It's is rubbish, isn't it? Oh dear, not sold. And the mahogany plant table valued at 40 to 60 pounds doesn't sell either. So let's hope the terrain and cider flagon valued at 30 to 50 pounds can get us back on track. Right, come on, now. let's see. Bit of a change here. I've been already at 22 pounds, I've been 28 pounds and 30 pounds. That's where we're going to start. I'll take two in the room. At 30 pounds, he'll be on the book. Take two now. <laughs> at 30 pounds, then run on the money at 30 pounds. We're selling then, all done. 30. Okay, that'll do me. That's mm -hmm. more than yeah. I paid for. Excellent. 30 pounds. It made its lower estimate. Finally, it's that collection featuring film star prints and antique documents, valued at 20 to 30 pounds. I've got one, two, three bids, and I'm starting me at £30. I'll take two now at £30. Take two. 32, 35, 38, and 40 with me, 42. Hey. Who £40. Who wants two? 42 there. Beats my commission bidders at 45 is next. Selling at 42 then. All done. All out, 42. 42. <laughs> Excellent. £42. That's well above the estimate. Tracy's had a good sale at auction and she's also managed to sell a few items off her own back before today. Tell me about all the stuff that you sold and how you did that. Uh, I sold it online, um, car boots. Mm -hmm. Had people just generally come and have a rumble. Yeah. And, um, yeah, made about £500 from that. Oh, my goodness, mm. did you? Yeah. That's astonishing. Did you help out? Oh, her? well, where I've been able to, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. But she's taken charge and it's her little baby now, so... It is. Tracy sold three items at auction and after commission made a total of £86. But she also sold other items to the tune of £500, making a total of £586. But more importantly, she's reclaimed her creative workspace from clutter. I get feelings of love when I go up there. <laughs> really? Yeah, I do, really. It's such a beautiful space, it's, it just blows my mind. By clearing out that space, it's opened up space in you as well to oh, do yeah. all the stuff. Even on the day, I could feel my head kicking back into gear. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Glad you've done it? Oh, absolutely. Loved it. Tracy has definitely cleared out and cleaned up along the way, and in doing so, it looks like she's managed to reignite her artistic spark. Still to come, is Diana really ready to let go? Why are you scowling? I'm not going to sell it for less than 50. <laughs> and she's in for a surprise as her items come up for auction. It's way above estimate. Are you surprised? Yeah. We've been getting to grips with the cluttered collections of two seasoned hoarders. Earlier, we met artist Tracy. She managed to make £586 and was able to reclaim her studio from chaos. Now it's time to catch up with amateur historian Diana, whose hoarding habit has spiralled out of control and is filling up her house. How did I squeeze all that in? I've called in collectibles expert Tracy Martin to take a look at Diana's collection and help her sort her storage problem once and for all. 
So, what she found? The first item is the George Morland painting, dated 1793. George Morland, renowned for his fantastic paintings on landscapes, animals, very British. There's a lot of people out there that would love to own this particular painting. Moving on to these gorgeous calling card cases, all in set with Mother of Pearl. This one's got the uh, tortoise shell. Just a time of elegance and femininity. For me, it just evokes just sort of a genteel period, really, but still quite desirable with collectors. I think there's only one good box there. Yep. And I think it's the tortoise shell one. The next item we have is this medicine case here with the original bottles, original lining. Some of the bottles are damaged, unfortunately. It's definitely an auction piece. We've also got all the other little accessories. So, although not complete, it's still a really lovely set. My favourite item on the table is this 1951 Festival of Britain box. Gorgeous colour, bright red flashes there, really good condition. The Festival of Britain really um, was about Britain speaking out to the world, saying we've recovered after the war. It was promoting our industries, our arts, and there is a lot of Festival of Britain memorabilia. But I've never seen this before. I'm going to be quite conservative with my estimate here because I'm not sure what way mm. it's going to go, but I'm thinking 50 to 100. She's scowling. Why are you scowling? I'm not going to sell <laughs> it for less than 50 because it's small and it's lovable. It's been a challenge for collector Diana to clear out, but Tracy has selected some really interesting items to take to auction. There's a George Moreland painting which Tracy's valued at four to five hundred pounds. The Mother of Pearl calling card cases, which she's estimated at 30 to 50 pounds. The mahogany medicine box, which Tracy's given an 80 to 120 pound estimate. And the Festival of Britain cigarette box, which she's valued at 50 to 100 pounds. Tracy's also picked out Diana's old oval with a valuation of 60 to 100 pounds and a wooden birdcage, which she has estimated at 20 to 40 pounds. But there's one item that needs a little more investigation. Your final piece is this deity, figure of a deity. Now, tell me about this. I bought that on Portobello Road with pocket money. How long ago? In the 60s. But I've never taken the time to find out exactly who it represents, when it was made, and what its significance is. What an intriguing little artefact. I think it's worth taking to a specialist, so I've sent them off to see Sam Hanbury Maiden, who's been dealing in tribal art and antiques since he was a boy. Okay, neatly wrapped. Mm. Interesting. Rather nice. This, to me, um, looks Nepalese or Tibetan. I'd probably say it is. Tibetan, just by the stylistic um, sort of aspects of the, of the piece, it's cast in brass, um, and it's it's a Buddhist deity called Amitabha, who is a Tibetan deity. Um, and originally, these were cast uh, back in the 14th and 15th centuries. Date-wise, I would say this dates to probably the early 20th century. This hand gesture um, is actually quite unusual, and there are collectors who just collect pieces with this hand gesture. Eastern religious figures can command high prices at auction. This figurine sold in New York for more than half a million dollars. But authenticity and age of the item are key. So have the heavens been kind to Diana, or has she been worshipping false gods? I think if you were to put that into auction today, I suspect it would probably fetch in the region of 150 to maybe 200 pounds. Could do possibly a lot more. Um, that is, unless you wanted to sell it to me. I would offer you 120 pounds for it. That's the offer I'm putting on the table right now. Sam, I think that's really fair, but I think I should get some more enjoyment out of it at the moment. Okay, okay, that's... But that's... it's there, yep. perhaps another time. Okay, okay. Well, that's one deity Diana won't be decluttering.
Well, he certainly knows his stuff. Yes, and he told me a lot as well. I learned things about that piece I didn't know before. Yeah. He even made me an offer, hey? Yeah, 120. Next stop, the auction room in Northampton. I hope Diane has a bit keener to clear out her historic hoard here. Are you hoping to sell everything today? No. There's something I'd like to take home. <gasps> Tell me what that is. It's the cigarette box from the Festival of Britain, so I've lashed a really high reserve on it. Why do you want to take it home again, really? It's compact. Uh-huh. And even for a hoarder, that's a consideration. With the auction about to begin, there's just time to hear what auctioneer Peter Harris thinks of Diana's hall. Diana's got some, some nice lots. The medicine box, it's got, um, I think, a couple of items the stopper's missing, possibly reach its reserve, I don't know. The pearl card cases, that have appealed to, to two lots of collectors, card collectors and also people who collect ephemera. I do like them myself, I think they're, they're, they're quite, quite nice. First up is that mahogany medicine box with a valuation of 80 to 120 pounds. Where should we start this one then? 100 pounds, let's get it away. the way, 100 pounds. Well worth it for 100 pounds. I'm going to 90 guys and that'll be it, 90 guys. 90 I've got, I'll take five anywhere else. Are we all done then? Made a bit at 90 pounds, we all done. That's good, isn't it? You happy with that? You happy with that, 90 pounds? Yes. That's a good start, so I've got high hopes for the 18th century George Moreland oil painting, valued at four to 500 pounds. Only problem is the reserve of 375 pounds. 450 anywhere, 450 pound anywhere in the room for it. No interest at in that, 450 pound then. 425, 425 anywhere. Let's get it away, 400 pound. 375 then guys, 375. I won't go no lower than 375, get it started. The painting, we all done and finished. Not sold. So, next it's that Festival of Britain cigarette box which Diana would be happy to hang on to. So, it's no surprise it's got a reserve of £55. This is the one you don't really want to sell, isn't it? £70 for the cigarette box from the Festival of Britain there. There we go, £70. 60 then. 60 anywhere. 55 then. Okay, it's down at its reserve. Finish at 55. You'd be taking it home. You'd be pleased with that. Very pleased. Not sold, and I think Diana's relieved. But the next item, the wooden birdcage, sells for £19. Now it's a musical item. Diana's oboe, valued at 60 to £100. 65 with me. I'll take 70 anywhere else. Are we all done now at £65 on a commission bid? We all done? £65. Now they're playing my song. Yeah. I can make music yeah. for someone else. I can make music for someone else. I like it. Finally, it's the Mother of Pearl calling card cases, which Diana didn't really rate. Now, I'll start that with me at £35. Anybody want to bid me 36? 36? 37, sir? 38? 39? 40? 41? You get three, two, three, four, five, 46, 29, 60, 70, 55, 60, sir, 70, 90, 100, 110, 120, 130, 40, 50, 140 pound of gentlemen to my right hand side. One, and they're not that nice. No, one of them needs storing as well. Fresh bidder. 155, 160, 165, sir. This is sir. weird. This is way above this to me. 175, sir. Are you surprised? 195. Yeah, very. 190, gentlemen to my left. Any advance on 195? Isn't that amazing? 195, anywhere else? 200, I've got bid. 205, sir. 200, gentlemen to my left hand side. We all done then? We're going to sell at 200 pounds. We all done? Sold. That's a great end to the day. One happy buyer. Quiz. Don't know. I hope one happy seller. Yeah. Wow, £200 far exceeds the £30 to £50 estimate. So, Diana, that was a bit of a mixed bag for you, wasn't it? It was kind of going up, down, up, down, and then there was nothing, and then there was a big sale, and... I never normally come to see my things being sold. I think it's very clinical and quite difficult to watch memories and things gone in 20 seconds flat. 
But actually, the calling card cases, that must have been all right seeing that going for £200. I've seen much nicer ones, but Mother knows best. The things that she used to buy and salt away were top quality. Is that right? Of their sort, and maybe I didn't recognise that. Diana sold four items at auction, including the card cases for £200 and the medicine box for £90. After commission, she's totaled £317 and has made great strides turning her house into a hoard-free home. Do you have a plan for this money, Diana? I do. And what's that? My plan is refurbishing my bedroom. Oh! Because your bedroom is the place where you've got all the space now, isn't it? It's beautiful. I can walk straight across <laughs> and get into bed. I'm really pleased we've been able to help you. Thank you. History Bath Diana has now made her hoard a thing of the past and can look forward to a clutter-free future. So there you are. Both Tracy and Diana have cleared the clutter and created extra space for themselves. Join me, Aggie McKenzie, next time on Storage Hoarders.